So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will begin the session by inviting our chairperson, uh, Ms. Roop Rashi, the Honorable Textile Commissioner, Ministry of Textiles, addressing the August gathering here. Over to you, ma'am, for your address. I would like to extend a warm welcome to international buyers and partners, captains of the Indian textile and apparel industry. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all our international buyers and partners, captains of the Indian textile and apparel industry, eminent speakers, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be a part of this business session of advanced technical textiles, which we consider as the way forward for our textile ecosystem. I will see that we have experts like Mr. Hendrik Vaughan, Delvin Senior Partner DC, authority on subjects like diversification to technical textiles, <clears throat> from fibers to laminate coated non wovens composites. Mr. Cherian K. Thomas, Chairman Delson Advanced Textiles, Mr. Rajiv Sajbe, Founder CEO of Indo German Yarns and Fibers. Uh, since they are on the panel, uh, this assures us that we are on the right point and direction in the learning as well as execution on the part of technical textile growth trajectory for India. Uh, some of the facts which all of us uh, uh, have been uh, reading up uh, and all I have yet, uh, since they highlight the potential of the sector, I would just recount them for us all that the technical textile industry is estimated at the size of US $186 billion and is growing at the rate of about 6% CAGR, uh, which is more than combined with the fashion and home textiles of 2%. The production of high performance fibers, as per our understanding, belongs in the US, Japan, European Union nations, India, China, and Korea. That technical textile represent about 34% of total textile production. As all of us are aware, the demand for non-woven textile received a major boost post-COVID and the dynamic uh, Indian industry under the leadership of our uh, esteemed leader goes to the challenge and uh, we increase the capacity of hygiene products and all the other kits, etc. Catapulting India into a major producer within a period of about two months only. That India is poised to achieve a significant space in this segment is our confidence. Indian textile, technical textile industry is at present having a valuation of about $50 billion and has a growth rate of 30 to 30 percent of the year. But the physical science of the book has been seen. India has about 2,100 technical textile units. So all of them have a high growth rate. In this context, as we have listened to our honorable uh, Mr. Nishan, the government has built textiles, the technical textiles, as the first area for textile policy and introduced several incentives and support measures. We starting from 15% capital subsidy under tax, establishment of professional technical textile mission, and production link incentive, which are major incentives initiatives and schemes to catalyze the growth. As uh, we understand, the important driver impact in technical textile market dynamics is the increasing adaptability and awareness of the product due to superior functionality. This is on account of case of innovation and upgradation possibilities. The change is attributable to demand for products that offer flexibility, durability, personal safety, high strength, and life weight. However, high cost of end product impacts pricing structure of intermediate product. The opportunity lies on proliferation of new technologies such as improved technologies in skilling, weaving, weaving segments, as well as wet skilling, thermoforming, three-dimensional weaving, mixed wet skilling, automation, digitalization of all these processes which will enable to bring down the cost and support the commercial feasibility of manufacturing technical textiles. 
though we need to always keep actually the varying environmental mandates across various regions. It's very important for the industry players that at this stage, when the government is looking at it as an opportunity area, we have the best collaboration possible with the local players, whether it be financial or technical. The partnership are a win-win proposition. That is what I would say, considering the potential winning to be tapped in India and the world. And hence, I congratulate the organizers for organizing this conflict, which is so well designed and well planned for harnessing the synergy, despite the challenges that we have faced in the past. I think morning we had a, a, a speaker from Germany saying, that we have to look at the disruptors. I guess sometimes the disruptors become the opportunities and we are able to and cash on that. Finance Minister has already announced seven parks and we look at that few of these parks with the plug in play facilities will be dedicated to technical excellence. We have nine centers of excellence across India, reaching to research, product development, testing, services, standardization, and we have six focus incubation centers. My request is that the industry should be able to use it in a more, they should not be working in silos and these should be working in an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach. Just an amazing innovation product of one segment of technical textile. All of us look at those 12 segments of technical textile would become a problem statement for another. Uh, I think we have cited in some other discussion also that we have to ensure that technical textiles are easy to capitalize maximum from the knowledge portion uh, which is found. We are also looking at the state of our technology. Ministry of Textiles is already collaborating with various other ministries, uh, uh, particularly in the infrastructure side, geotech, agrotech, to ensure that the demand from the government side sustains the momentum for technical textiles. We look forward to increased participation in technical textile value chain of India. We assure you that our government will continue to be an active partner in the progress of this segment. We will extend our full cooperation and uh, it is our joint quest for achieving our Honorable Prime Minister dream of Atma Nimbar Bharat. I wish City and all the participants a grand success and wish all the best for this conference. Now, if I remember, Sapna, I was told to hand over seamlessly to the loop TVs. Am I supposed to do it or you are going to do it? You can hand over to me, uh, ma'am. I, I, I was supposed to say a few words about him so that I hand over the baton to him. So I can do that? Yes, ma'am, please go ahead. Uh, now, I request Mr. Luke TVs, Managing Director, Bombix Capital, to moderate the session. A uh, few words of introduction. He is the managing partner at Bombay's Capital Partners AG at a textile related innovation growth fund. Important for us. In 1998, D. Breeze joined the executive board of Telgate, where he concentrated on the technical textile sector. Mr. D. Breeze studied mechanical engineering and business administration at PH20, University of Technology. Over to Mr. Breeze. Thank you. Thank you all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the advanced textile session of the second Global Textile Conclave 2021, where we will discuss building blocks for creating a strong technical textile ecosystem. We have three excellent speakers in our session who will share their ideas and thoughts about technical textiles with us. The three panelists will give us a short presentation and thereafter I will ask three questions for each speaker one. After that, I will take another three questions from the audience. That starts with the three presentations. The first speaker is Mr. Hendrik van Delden. He is senior partner of Getschi Germany. Mr. van Delden will talk about gross market technical textiles and key success factors. Second speaker is Mr. Rajiv Sajay, CEO of Tax and Twist. He will take us to the subject, giving what India needs in his introduction. The third speaker is Mr. Gerian Thomas, CEO of Wellspun Advanced Textiles. He 
he will give us an introduction to his company. Dear um, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, dear organizers of the Conclave 2021, my name is Hendrik van Delden and I'm going to talk to you today about gross market technical textiles and some key success factors uh, in this industry. First about myself, I'm senior partner at Gertzi Textile Organisation Zurich. Um, Gertzi is a textile advisory firm founded in 1929. We are supporting clients with feasibility studies, market studies, supply chain strategies, innovation and growth initiatives, product and market development, operational improvement, due diligence and mergers acquisitions, as well as engineering and implementation work. Since more than 20 years, we have been heavily involved in technical textiles, both for manufacturers of yarns and fibers, fabrics, non-wovens, composites, as well as downstream component manufacturing and manufacturing of functional apparel. Um, this as a background, um, we at Gertzi have a world technical textile market model about which I'm going to show some numbers in the following three slides. Uh, 2019, the tech text market worldwide was about 186 billion US dollar. This is on roll good level, which means without the downstream from roll good value added steps. Typically, we segment this market into three main product families. Uh, one is the yarn type technical textile, which is the smallest product family uh, like sewing threads or medical sutures. The largest product family is fabric type technical textiles, um, which is like coated fabrics, big bags, um, uh, filtration fabrics, print substrate, etc. And then we have the non-wovens as a third category. Um, uh, being split between um, disposable non-wovens like top sheet and back sheet for baby diapers, uh, wipes, uh, wound dressing, etc., and durable non-wovens like for filtration or for automotive applications. By region, this 186 billion US dollar market is roughly split half between uh, Europe, US, and China, and half the rest of the world. Obviously, China, which is the third largest uh, market in the world, is the main competitor for Indian technical textile exports on world markets. But on the other hand, we have a 64 billion US dollar demand into which Indian technical textile exports can tap in um, the European Union and in the USA. If we look at the dynamics of this market, we see that up to 2018, there was a healthy growth from 119 billion US dollar in 2010 to 180 billion US dollar in 2018. The growth rate in percent in the traditional technical textiles was a bit lower with four to five percent compared to the, comp to the non wovens which have grown between eight and 10 percent. Obviously this market has also been impacted by COVID-19. So there was a dip in 2020. But we foresee that by 2023, the uh, pre-COVID-19 uh, market volumes of 180 billion US dollar in 2018 will again be exceeded with a forecast of 210 billion US dollar market size in 2023. However, we see that again, and likely in a bit more pronounced format, the traditional technical textiles like wovens or knits are growing slower with one to 2% per year compared to the non-wovens, which are growing at seven to 8% per year. Let's take a case study uh, in order to look at some key success factors in this industry. The case study, which we have uh, selected and which we would like to show you in the following is company Siun in Belgium. This is a manufacturer of coated fabrics, technical wovens, non-wovens and of protective apparel. The sales of Siun in 2019 was 510 million euros with 4,800 employees, quite a number of those in garment making factories in North Africa or in Asia. Um, Siun has excelled with a high level of top line growth from 265 million euros in 2009 to 510 million euros in 2019, which is an addition of 25 million euro of sales every year. Uh, also, the stock market has valued this kind of top level growth uh, with a almost five fold uh, multiplication 
of the market capitalization of Sion between 2009 and 2019, which is an 18% annual growth rate of market capitalization of the company. All this based on solid financials. Uh, 2019, we saw a um, EBT earnings before tax of 7.5% on sales and a EBITDA of 13% on sales. Now, what were the key success factors which have allowed Siyun this extraordinary performance? One was vertical integration, which means a full control of the production processes and value chain intellectual property. Second was a, a strong customer focus combined, and this is important with a high industrial flexibility, which means that um, the most of the high quality textiles produced by Siyun were custom made. Third, striving for market leadership in the segments which are actually covered, which is a target number one position in technically demanding markets via both organic growth or inorganic growth through mergers and acquisitions. And fourth, a investment into innovation, be it in investment into internal or into open innovation, aiming at new production processes, new materials, new products, and new markets. What does all this mean for India? We have here a SWOT profile, a Gertzi SWOT profile of the Indian technical textile industry. The strengths, we see a strong industrial culture and strong competence to serve global markets. We have a good network of engineering schools and an increasingly good network of tech tech R&D facilities. We have a good cost base in textile manufacturing, and we have some global globally competitive raw materials like polypropylene chips, cotton, or man-made staple fibers. On the weaknesses side, we still require quite an important import of key raw materials needed for the manufacturing of technical textiles, like technical filaments, aramides, glass fiber, or carbon fibers. Also, we see that except some limited products like PP tape or natural fiber-based wovens, the exports of India of technical textiles are still relatively weak. And last, we have a limited experience in this industry, in the Indian industry, in converting international norms into uh, products and into corresponding Indian manufacturing processes. On the potential side, on the opportunity side, we see a potential for accelerated import replacement like in medical textiles. We see potentially very large Indian market, which is gradually moving towards international norms. The good uh, airbag examples, which we have ex uh, been observed in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, and we see potential for further tech tech export growth in new regions, like in FIBC or in Sewing Thread, or in major products where India could be strong and which are traded on a global scale in large volumes. Last, there is obviously the innovation potential and backed up by CapEx and investments in new technologies and new Techtex products. On the threat side, China is the major competitor of India on the world market, like in non-woven glass fiber composite reinforcements or PVC coated fabrics. We have a relatively low conversion rate of the Indian local Indian Techtex market to international norms. Uh, if we look at flame retardancy or geotextile related norms or regulations. And we have for everybody in the world, the rising trade barriers in North America, basically non-tariff trade barriers via, via Techtex specific norms. Um, relating to the four to the 12 um, uh, Techtex applications, as everybody knows from the Messe Frankfurt segmentation, what are the typical questions which are brought forward to us uh, by uh, Indian uh, technical textile manufacturers? Question one, where to invest uh, with potential for growth, profitability, and build up of own intellectual property in technical textiles? How to profit from demand in above average growth technologies like non woven white with coated fabrics or composites? How and from where do we get the know how and related product technologies to start or expand the business in highly non tech markets? How and with which target customers can we accelerate the volume growth to fill our existing or anticipated tech tech production facilities? And last, is there potential for international tie ups or for mergers and acquisitions? to facilitate scaling up 
the existing or planned TechDex business. Thank you for your attention. This is the end of my presentation. Good morning to all the esteemed participants uh, to this uh, uh, conclave. My name is Cherian Thomas and I'm happy to introduce Wellspan India, uh, advanced textile business to all of you. You know, before that, uh, let me just tell you about Wellspin Group first. Some of you might know, but just to uh, share that we are into uh, home textiles, uh, into large diameter pipes, infrastructure business, and uh, lately we've also uh, got into the you know the warehousing uh, space. Uh, so the various entities, uh, some listed, some not, uh, with which we participate in this uh, Indian economic uh, playfield. So we have about 2.7 billion uh, with an asset base of uh, over a billion and uh, we have about 27, 25,000 um, odd employees who actually form the, you know, the bed of the bedrock of uh, the organization. Uh, further drilling down, uh, the home textiles uh, entity, which is Wellsman India Limited, which is a limited and uh, a listed entity, uh, houses uh, four businesses, home textiles, which is the flagship. Uh, selling towels and over the bed items to uh, around the world, including the country. Uh, we have a new business for flooring, which does uh, your, your stone polymer composite and regular carpet tiles and wall to wall carpet and so on. Uh, we have uh, the retail business, which is uh, right now in India, and uh, we have uh, some coveted brands uh, in the world to go with. And then, of course, we have the advanced success business uh, about which I'm uh, going to share more. So uh, the advanced textiles business, it's, uh, you know, houses, it's a three or four technologies. Uh, all of you from the non-woven industry will quickly identify spun lace, needle punch, thermal bonding. And uh, apart from these three, downstream conversion, value added, we do one product, which is wet wipe. So basically we take the spun lace and we take it down and convert it into a finished wipe and uh, the customers in the you know in the hygiene space. So to reiterate, uh, we are uh, the advanced excel business runs across three or four uh, technologies: the spun lace, as I mentioned, uh, creating products for the disposables and hygiene and baby wipes and so on. The needle punch, which does uh, which works with a lot of man-made smart fibers and does uh, mediums and fabrics for the industrial filtration. Uh, as uh, liner material for the PPE and uh, other specialized you know, applications as, 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 as uh, many of you would uh, understand. Uh, the thermal bond itself, uh, again, uh, the needle punch after the cross lap uh, can potentially be, you know, with the right um, additives, go into an oven and we, you, you make a, you know, the material that goes in the poly wadding that can go into comforters and so on and so forth. And then of course there are other uh, myriad applications around sound, sound, sound installation and you know, uh, HVAC media and so on and so forth. Uh, we also do have some, uh, some let's say specialized coating machines, which can actually do let's say a dot coating or we can actually do a color and a printing or a dyeing on either of the medium, which is either, either spun lace medium or uh, the needle punched, uh, needle punch medium. You can also do smart coating uh, with an oil or water repellent uh, or, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, um, the journey uh, of advanced skills uh, started about almost like 10 years back uh, with a very humble, let's say, thermobonded non woven which was like a, let's say, it was a little backward integrated because we were anyway in the, in the home textiles business. So uh, the poly wadding helped us uh, make uh, smart comforters for our existing customers like Walmart and so on and so forth. Um, the spun lace line, uh, which came in also as a, as a, let's say, as a, to produce a smart patented wonder fabric, quote unquote wonder fabric, uh, saw us getting a, a, a smart German line uh, with, a, with, a, with a very specialized capability and uh, that started in 2012. 
and uh, we you know the technology allowed us to add cards and uh, capacities and we doubled it and since 2014 we 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 cater to the large part of the global demand of us and europe for uh, the spun lace fabric which cater to the uh, the hygiene space for, for the wet wipes and also some industrial application um, and and then we, we we kind of added another needle punch line in 16 to make to handle uh, some special technical fibers uh, to make composites and uh, uh, as I said, the entire needle punch range of uh, projects for the for the automotive filtration, industrial filtration, and so on. And uh, the coating lines that we saw that I mentioned about that we added in 17, 18 or so. And uh, then of course uh, we have some lamination lines. And then we have some plans uh, of adding another expanding capacities, uh, which many of you who are following would know that we are putting up another plant in uh, Telangana this time for uh, the spun lace line. And uh, we're adding some more downstream uh, conversion lines for the. So, so till now that I've said, you know, you'll, you'll realize that spun lace, wet wipes, needle punch, you've heard these. Uh, so what we've done is we've arranged the entire business, textiles business uh, runs uh, around or driven by three SBUs, uh, which is spun lace, wet wipes, uh, needle punch. And then you also have a, we also kind of seeding a new SBU, uh, especially for cotton based all around the, all around the non-woven side. And each of these SBUs uh, have themselves created smart products. Some of the products that you name, some names that you see, are special spun lace lines, which are products that we have, we have with, with some amount of uh, IP and uh, patent. And uh, the wet wipes itself, it's basically we do, we are like private label manufacturers. Uh, hitherto, we've not got our own brands, but uh, we do see that also to change. But hitherto, we have been doing, uh, let's say, brands for large Indian multinationals and global multinationals like Kimberly Clark, Himalaya, uh, Unicham, so on and so forth, and uh, which, which basically cuts across, you know, your baby wipes and your makeup removal wipes, cosmetic wipes, and so on. And uh, even a needle punch, for example, we have, you know, we've got industrial filtration products that cater to the process industry. And a lot of our products are, are, a few of them are nicely developed and patented and actually delivers a lot of value for, for the, for the, for the uh, user. And uh, we've also kind of developed some smart solutions of different cal rating for the PPE, for the liner material. And uh, we see this, uh, we see a lot of our customers, global customers, um, admiring us and partnering us, you know, uh, because of these uh, innovations which are housed and based out of technology and non-woven um, uh, know-how that uh, we have in Welshman Advanced Textiles. Uh, before I close, uh, just to tell you, I mean, many of you know that you know, our reason to exist is because the, we cater to the disposables and the durables. I will leave it to my colleagues at Gurzi who are more adept at uh, vetting the numbers. But between uh, the disposables and durables, uh, both one driven by technology, other driven by consumerism, we know that uh, this demand for the non-woven, you know, 5%, 7%, the growth will continue globally. And there is a part to play. And uh, and as and India, with its knowledge on uh, the non-woven technology and with uh, uh, smart and young uh, talent, we should be able to you know, cater to the global demand, which could be, let's say, through the wipes and hygiene and medical segments, or the PP industrial and the you know the other value-added uh, products for the for the durables itself. So that is how we uh, we, we 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 play the we play the game uh, at Advanced Textiles at Wellspun, and uh, once again I I thank you all for your time and your patience. Maybe I've exceeded my time of eight minutes, but uh, I'm very happy to take uh, any questions now or later as the moderator might uh, might decide. 
thank you once again and uh, thank you Gerzi and thank you the Confederation of uh, Indian Textile Industry for giving me the chance to speak and introduce the company. Hello, I am Rajiv Saite, Managing Partner, Indo-German Yarn and Fibers. And I welcome all dignitaries, members and attendees at the Global Textile Conclave 2021. It will be my pleasure to talk on the uh, technical textiles potential of India and uh, what we do as a company. Giving India what it needs. Uh, that's the philosophy we've worked on and would like to continue working on. Uh, I incorporated Tex and Twist in 1994. Uh, this was uh, primarily a consulting company uh, trying to cater to the needs of the spinning and the non-woven industry, though at that time the non-woven industry was non-existent. Uh, we ventured into uh, technical textiles in 2000 and uh, tried to find customized solutions uh, for those uh, requiring uh, help in the technical textile sector. Uh, the raw materials at that time were very expensive and they continue to be so till date. Uh, the costs of imports were always exorbitant because the quantities were small and there were no local manufacturer suppliers. The economies of scale were never there. And as a result, we continued using traditional textiles like nylon, steel, ceramic, polypropylene, even hazardous materials like investors for gloves, aprons. They continue to be used today, even today. Uh, technical textiles uh, was growing rapidly uh, the world over. I'm speaking about 2000. Uh, and uh, the developed countries were already in their third or fourth cycle. Uh, when I say third or fourth cycle, it means, say, for a protective jacket, the life cycle is about five to seven years. But uh, and uh, they were already there for two or three decades. Uh, so, and most textile manufacturers, uh, the raw material suppliers, uh, enjoyed a monopoly or duopoly, uh, and the demand was constantly increasing, and so were the prices. And we felt India needed uh, to get on the map quickly, and we needed an affordable solution, because we had some basic needs, which uh, the domestic needs, which need to be fulfilled. Uh, because Texentwist had an established network uh, with manufacturers and processors through our contacts through 1990s, we gathered a lot of knowledge on the technical textiles. Uh, uh, we understood some key features like the abrasion, cut, and heat resistance of these materials, which were very, very inherent to them. And I also understood that these attributes could be retained nearly permanently if handled correctly. Now, we did some R&D with our partners uh, and we rework on some post-industrial and post-consumer materials. Uh, it was a daunting task and uh, uh, because a lot of material was being dumped because the uh, end products were always very high value. And they could afford to dump them, uh, though not a very nice thing to do. Uh, so, but there were no established channels for these raw materials to bring them back in the mainstream. Uh, we needed a shift in the attitude of how people handle these materials uh, against the conventional materials. But it was one of the most difficult things, uh, changing human behavior. We continued uh, with our struggle because we found that not only was raw material a problem, but the machines to process the material were a problem. They had to be tweaked, remodeled, and we had to train a manpower very, very specifically for this. This was very, very important. 
because reworking on these materials is was very, very essential to retain their unique characteristics. As without these, such materials would no longer be technical. Uh, but we also had a lot of resistance from our end customers because they perceived this material as recycled uh, and hence second grade. Nobody wanted to use second grade and technical textures. So after a lot of work, uh, three years or more, um, Indo-German yarn and fibers was born and, and, uh, uh, with a lot of uh, hits and misses, uh, we developed a suitable yarn uh, and we re call it re-engineered yarn. It's not recycled because, re because it retains all the characteristics that are required uh, for a good yarn which can be tested to all parameters as required by SGS, Athira, Nitra. And uh, I'm glad to say that we are able to export this yarn to, to EU, US, and even China. In the domestic market, uh, we were able to replace uh, the fabric made out of this yarn. Uh, for the very expensive imports. And, uh, and with our experience in this field, uh, we continue to consult and advise industries on best solutions for their uh, needs. We even partner with global companies for their foray into the Indian technical textile market. We must remember that in India, not one size fits all. Uh, we are, we are a very, very diverse uh, country and market. Uh, cut and paste uh, of the developed uh, country's products, I, I think sometimes doesn't work in India. You need to modify them. You need to cater to the Indian specific needs. We have customized them. Um, our yarn is now being used in, into woven fabrics, narrow fabrics, braids, industrial packaging, uh, knits, even personal protection uh, garments, uh, fully full garments are being made out of it. It's used, even used in the friction industry. Uh, just a few examples. And uh, we are very happy to say that our products are all EN, NFPA, or ISO, or ANSI certified. So um, even our products are aluminized, uh, means coated, and uh, they still pass all the requisite tests, even in countries like Germany and US. The potential in India is huge, it's still growing. Uh, it's going to keep going at about 10 to 12%. So we look forward to some uh, significant uh, turnovers, good turnovers. Though our exports are not that robust, but uh, I'm, I personally am not worried because there is a huge, huge domestic market for us. Uh, our per capita consumption is so low if you compare it to, say, US, Germany, or China, that uh, the potential is there for anyone to see. The biggest weakness in India is the non availability of raw materials, and we have to find a way to work around. And uh, the strength is the huge, huge domestic market. Uh, and we are very adaptive. We can, we can work around things and uh, so can our end users, uh, provided we give them the right products, uh, what they need. We, under we should understand what they need and then uh, give them what, exactly what they need. As I see, the biggest growth areas will be agrotech, uh, industry tech, into tech, uh, sport tech, and pro tech. Meritech has already found its way and expected to surge. Uh, so, COVID was a big uh, uh, push to, to the Meritech industry and I think to the technical textile person. Just a few pictures of our works and our partners with whom we work continuously uh, in the optic fiber cable industry, friction, uh, textile, uh, fiber processing, and fabrics and yarns. So um, 
I think India has a huge potential going forward and uh, we just need to uh, focus on the right areas. Thank you very much. Thank you for your introduction. Excellent. I have a first question for Mr. Zadje or Mr. Thomas. Which are the top two to three opportunities for growth in technical textiles in India and what major challenges must be overcome? Who want to answer this question? So I may uh, go first with your permission, Rajiv. So, uh, so although I'm not from the industry, but my sense when I based on what I've read in the past and what I see after having been in the industry, I think in India, you know, anything that drives modernization will drive the technical textile, let's say consumption. And to my mind, where I see, you know, the three, three or four sectors in India, which is which can potentially drive this are defense, uh, transport, infra, and let's say I'm just calling it cement power mining, you know, just as a, so these three or four have an opportunity for moving up the chain in terms of technology adoption, so that itself should drive. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sajja, you want to add something uh, yeah. on this yeah. question? I would. Um, I think uh, the growth areas I see as uh, having the biggest potential from the Indian standpoint would one would be protech uh, why i say protech because uh, we have an established cut and sue uh, you know business in india and this industry needs to adapt now to this uh, protech uh, business uh, for uh, making protective uh, jackets and the whole load you know workwear uh, and even as an export this can be having having a big big potential but of course, they are going to have to modernize into better uh, machines. And of course, um, that's where the drawback is that we'll have to look for raw materials, which will have, still have to be imported. The sewing threads, everything. I mean, they have to change, but the manpower and the setups are there. This has been made evident during the COVID uh, when we came up with the PPE kits. It was all because of our cut and sew uh, strength. That is one area and the other will be the sports tech, you know, that should, should be a good area for growth because again, it's an established area. They need to go into the carbon fiber business and all that, and they should have a ready markets in India and in developing countries. So what you're saying, in fact, is India is uh, is ready uh, to um, to um, explore the road to technical textiles. So the Absolutely. infrastructure is there, the knowledge is there, the technology is there, and maybe um, uh, India has to acquire it, but, uh, but it's ready for the future. Yes. Is that right? Right conclusion? Then I have another uh, question uh, for you both. Um, the Indian government has announced important initiatives and incentives to promote the technical textile industry. Uh, Mr. Thomas, what for impact do you foresee? So, uh, so obviously, it's a it's a well thought of document, and uh, it's very ambitious, very coming right from the top. Um, uh, but like in all policies, you know, between the what you think through and the way we execute, there always are you know gaps. So, uh, I think I think the you know uh, let's say the uh, if the if the if the if the various ministries, let me put it this way, in the country. Uh, can adopt, as I said, uh, usage of usage and prescribing of modern material in the in the in the product, whether it is a, whether it's a, you know, whether it is for uh, the forces, whether it is for uh, equipment for transportation, or for the uh, or for railways. What I mean is, the moment the specifications are are prescribed, which 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 underlines the usage of modern material, which in itself makes it smarter, lighter, uh, you know, and the adoption happens faster with the prescription. Government, this itself creates the right eco, uh, the right environment for you know for the for the for the uh, for the supply side to start. So the moment the demand is put in place, the usage is put in place, I think the the entrepreneurs in the country will quickly come together because India is a place with scarce resource. 
and no entrepreneur is willing to oh well chances that he will front end an investment and wait for the demand to pick up is you know is a little i mean we don't have those kind of resources in the country uh, so i think it's the moment we see the clarity on the on the demand side or the usage side i'm sure things will just rapidly you know uh, turn on all cylinders do you also see a chance for uh, alliances with other companies um, coming from foreign countries uh, just to build this uh, this uh, textile technology uh, perspective for india of course if it's just to me i mean i of course of course because see across all the uh, whether it is uh, health hygiene medicine medical uh, personal care geo in all these in, in all these sectors uh, already there are smart materials and smart products at work in the rest of the in the, let's say in the developed or the economy in the developed uh, economies now as you know there's no reason why these products uh, as the as the demand builds up the next phase of expansion for those companies why it should not be in india it can very well be in india and i do for i mean we already see a lot of companies moving in uh, either directly or with a jv because you know the demand will grow and the next demand can be met with the footprint in india because the people technology manpower uh, the infrastructure by and large is all there and there's also a big arbitrage in terms of you know the general costs which uh, which the uh, low cost company like the, the country provides so there's always an arbitrage for the businessman to you know to to play with so yes the answer is yes okay um i have another question um that's the following this is for mr sajay um how can the indian policy be made more effective well as my uh, friend said yes the the policy has been drafted uh, which is uh, the textile technical textile mission uh, march 2020 which is a very very you know forward looking document uh, they've set up you know uh, a committee on technical uh, research and development and innovation and they put in the defense forces into it they are they are part of that committee along with the iit that's the indian technical uh, institutions uh, along with it so that's a very very good step because uh, if we are going to expand on this in the coming near future we need to get the knowledge down to these uh, new generation which is coming out of these universities and uh, the tie up with the universities is very very important we need to educate these people on these products on these technical products and uh, for that uh, there have to be specific courses for this they should be there and we need engineers and chemical engineers in this business now not it's not just technical uh, it's not textile it's technical textiles so we need these people into this business and yes the we've suggested as part of cia and um, indian technical textile association we've requested the government to harmonize the hs codes for technical textiles this is very very important these are non existent at the moment and as long as you don't have those codes you cannot set up the parameters so all these things have to be you know uh, because they are still in the general textile categories so yeah. they have to be you know put in the right scope for uh, for the entrepreneurs to take these forward because there are a lot of bottlenecks because of those in the customs and gst and everything so those have to be uh, done in the right way i saw always as a, as a big challenge and a huge opportunity in india as a geosynthetic business uh, for land reclamation shore protection and and road construction but it never, it never um, really uh, did, did uh, get the, the right support there, uh, because still it's very difficult to sell uh, or to produce geosynthetics. What's the reason for that? Because this is something what the Indian government really can, uh, can support, if you if talk about industry policy. Well, I think... Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, no, no, please go on, please go on. Up to you, Raji, up to you, up to you. sorry. No, no, I was just saying that the government has just taken a, a first step because they've just reduced duties on, you know, uh, products like nylon, which is, which is, in my personal view, the right direction, you know. 
because that's a they, they have to look at raw materials which are not available here and allow a uh, freer import of those basic raw materials uh, because without that this industry just cannot take off um, uh, until we start producing them here that's one of the things that this government has to do and look at them at a with a very with a with a binocular if you ask me you know very very uh, nicely on to you uh, thomas please no, so uh, you know, Ravis, what you mentioned in terms of, as I said, in terms of adoption of uh, smart material in uh, in any of the uh, you know industry, be it road making. Uh, see, hitherto the uh, the roads were laid by the public works department or the national highway authorities and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, there was a rigor with which uh, they used to go about uh, you know executing these projects. And we do have, we did have, I mean, for all, whether good or bad, a very st stringent or a strong techno commercial process. But what happens is when it is very strong, what happens is the ability to move away from the laid uh, to to use material that is smarter, which can which can kind of front load the the costs, and hence to go through the justification, uh, you know, and in a democratic setup like ours. You know, it, it is like inviting a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, due diligence, which, which, which say you might avoid. But I think that is changing now with the public uh, private participation in a lot of infrastructure development. So the private where the moment the decision making is left to a to a to, a, to an engine that is, let's say, non completely government, the ability to see through the value in some of the in some of the smart material is much stronger, faster, and he is able to deliver on, let's say, post delivery warranties by ensuring that the product that he's making will last, let's say, beyond the five years, seven years cost of repairs. So it is already changing a lot of infrastructure and roads that is already being done by in a PPP model. And there you see that adoption is there. It's only a matter of time that slowly as the government steps away from some of the activities true power of you know the capital and its investment comes in play and you know you'll start seeing more of this that, that that's the way I, i'm always an optimist i do see it happening in india as well okay very good uh, thank you mr thomas question for uh, uh mr hendrik van delden um what is the one big message you want to give to the um, indian textile industry what can you do to to to, to help to um, companies to develop the right technology in India? Well, I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will cut myself a bit short because uh, the time is running out for this Q&A session. We have done uh, quite a lot of work with Indian uh, conglomerates and medium-sized enterprises uh, to look at investments into technical textiles. And I think we can summarize three basic rules uh, which are important for such an investment to succeed. I think the first one is that any investment should have high-end Indian demand as well as export demand. In high-end Indian demand, I mean uh, product sophistication on a world, world market level. So it's important that a new factory can address both markets, India as well as export, and not as of the first day uh, have to rely on 100% exports only. The second important message is uh, that the uh, raw materials, and I think uh, uh, Rajesh, you mentioned that already, that the raw materials on which such an expansion of technical textiles is based are available both competitive from a price position as well as from a performance position. So if we have to start with the raw material disadvantage, uh, I think uh, any investment will already be be hindered from 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 the start. So the raw material on which the product um, uh, is based uh, need to be competitive. And the third um, uh, is that we should not cut corners on manufacturing technology. Um, so I think if we cut corners on manufacturing technologies, we're cutting corners on on product sophistication, and then we might find ourselves on a in direct competition with China, for example, and that always always hinders uh, any kind of success strategy. Voila. OK, thank you. Then I have a few questions from the audience. Um, Mr. Sergei, um, 
um, uh, first generation tech tax entrepreneur. Uh, what motivated you into the industry? Oh, well, the simple answer was that um, in 2000, I saw for a small or medium sized industry like mine, saw very little in the normal textile. I am a textile man. The margins were dwindling. There was really nothing to do. And to compete with the big people was uh, something which I realized was going to not going to be easy. And uh, that's what uh, motivated, me, motivated me to go into technical textiles. I saw this as a line which would develop uh, quickly and with uh, with good uh, uh, pace in India. And that's what uh, really motiv motivated me to go into technical textiles. OK, thank you. Um, just because reason of time, we go a little bit quicker. Uh, Mr. Vandala, what are the typical services Getsy is offering to new entrants in the tech tax industry in India? Yeah, I think it can, can be done in a very short manner. We are advisors to industry, so we help uh, industrialists and companies and entrepreneurs identify the right product, the right market and the right technology to quickly succeed in technical textiles. Um, we uh, help once we have identified the attractive uh, technology and product market setup, we can translate that into a, into a coherent business plan for uh, shareholders and banks. And then finally, we can help to make it happen, uh, be it by implementing the commercial and marketing plan, be it, be it by uh, helping to overcome the know-how barrier, or finally to build the plant with our engineering division in Mumbai. I have a last very fast question for uh, Mr. Thomas. Um, uh, well, you're a CEO of an, uh, a big company, a well-respected company. That means uh, you have vision, you build it all. Um, um, what is the impact of COVID-19 uh, on the growth of the tech, tech industry? Do you have uh, opinions or ideas or thoughts about this? No, so on the tech textile, see, um, obviously there was a spike in uh, demand in the non-woven uh, stock roll good that we make. We also found as a corporate entity, we also saw that there's need for uh, a very the humble three layer surgical mask and the N95 equivalent respirator, there was a demand for the country. So, uh, you know, so we as a company, uh, the chairman lives, lives his vision. So what was important uh, for the country is, uh, is important for us. And uh, although we got in more from a CSV point of view, uh, we did start making and contributing uh, uh, to the cause by making the three layer surgical mask and the respirator. And to an extent, although we do a lot of spun lace, and spun lace might not be the most, let's say, uh, valuable way of delivering uh, coverall, but we started doing coverall because uh, generally there was a demand, uh, and we were able to match, do that uh, for the time for the for a being. But uh, otherwise, the roll good demand was 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 high. So as I say, it was good times and bad times, but uh, you know we did what we had to do. So. It, it was it, the demand did kind of uh, give us a bit of a lift uh, in terms of business. If you're asking, yes. Very good. Sorry, gentlemen, I have to uh, uh, stop with this um, with this session. Gentlemen, thank you for all your uh, insights and contribution. For sure, technical textiles are the materials of choice for the future, and this ends the panel discussion on building blocks for creating a technical textile ecosystem. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Our distinguished moderator and all our eminent expert speakers for their valuable insights. I would like to also thank Ms. Roop Rashi, the Honorable Textile Commissioner, Ministry of Textiles, for chairing the session and sparing her valuable time from her busy schedule. I would also like to thank the moderators and the panelists for sharing their valuable thoughts on such important topics and guiding the industry players to draw out their future strategies to make early inroads to achieve the new heights. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it brings us to the end of the proceeding, the first day of the second edition of the Global Textile Conclave. I once again thank each one of you for taking out your precious time and attending the event in overwhelming numbers. Your presence has helped in making all the sessions very enriching and meaningful. I wish everyone a very good day ahead. 
and we will now meet tomorrow with the second day's proceedings, which has six important business sessions lined up. The first session will commence at 1400 India Standard Time, is on addressing climate change in the fashion industry. The second session will be at 14.50 India Standard Time on digitalization in textile manufacturing. And there is also a panel session running at the same time on impact of emerging trade alignments. Then we have the next session at 15.45 IST of uh, GST on global fiber situation. And again, a panel session running at the same time on new business models in textiles and fashion industry. And finally, at 15.35 India session, uh, Standard Time, we have the sixth session of GTC on sourcing of home textiles advantage India. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was a wonderful day one of GTC 2021. Once again, thanking each one of you for your participation, sparing your time and being here with us. And please join us tomorrow at 1400 hours India Standard Time to commence with the proceedings of day two of GTC 2021. Thank you once again, signing off now. Have a wonderful day ahead. Good evening and Namaskar.